Sherman Porterhouse in Chicago's famous Hotel Sherman. It's time now for your family to join the millions of families from coast to coast and listen to America's favorite Don McNeil and his breakfast club. And here is your Toastmaster, Don McNeil. Good morning, breakfast clubbers. Good morning to ya. We woke up right and early. Good morning to ya. First call to breakfast. For all of you out there. America, I wake the breakfast club. is on the Uh, good morning to you all. Mighty glad to see you today. And the Porter House room is jumping this morning. We've got folks from all over the country here. Uh, just to give you an idea, the Methodist Youth Fellowship Group from Grand Island, Nebraska. The uh, they're here. They are here. Uh, the Women's uh, Country Club, 30 Farmerettes from Hillsdale, Illinois. Uh, those are the women who are wearing something in place of hats this morning. <laughs> Very pretty. They made them all themselves. Uh, we have Knights of Columbus folks conventioning here, correctional officials, those are wardens and their wives, chiropodists, the fellows who make money going to the dogs. We have uh, 4-H clubbers from Ashkin, Illinois. Uh, teachers conventioning in town, boys club of Cicero, Illinois, and housewife students, visitors from everywhere. That group from uh, Ashkin, Illinois. Uh, they, ha they are the national 4-H club group from there. I think it'd be real nice if they start the program off by standing up and giving their 4-H club pledge for us. Would this uh, group uh, do that? I heard some of them uh, yelling there before. Where's the group, Mashkum? Right down here. All right, we'd appreciate uh, hearing your 4-H club pledge. All together, if you please. Thank you very much. We go along with you there. Those are our sentiments exactly. Thank you so much. And now we're going to greet you all with a little song by Dick Noel. Everybody, everybody goes crazy here. Yeah. Well, we are going to greet you with a song by Dick Noel in just a moment or two. Avery Jones of Delaware, Ohio, sent me such a cute uh, note yesterday. It says a couple of years ago, her oldest son, Norman, who was then seven years old, was sick with rheumatic fever, and she says, of course, I had to take his temperature several times a day. One morning, we were sitting at the breakfast table listening to the weather report on the radio, and we got the temperature of different cities. My youngest son, Roger, was then three years up, piped up, and he said, Mother, they didn't give Norman's temperature. <laughs> so I'd like to give Norman's temperature this morning. Normal, I hope. <laughs> All right, Norman. All right, everybody. Here is Dick Noel and wedding day. <laughs> I asked her pa if we couldn't wed, he said, you must be touched in the head, cause the man who wins her pretty little hand, he will surely have to own some farm and land. So I went out west with shovel and pick, and worked and worked, and then pretty quick, I struck it rich and bought me a farm with a cute little house and a big red barn. Got a pig, got a cow, got a horse and buggy now. And soon I will be driving on the old highway. Got a farm, got a plow, got a heart for working now. Tomorrow morning is my wedding day. There'll be friends throwing rice, there'll be applejack on ice. And everybody dancing while the fiddles play. Come along to the hall, you're invited for the hall. Tomorrow morning is my wedding day. 
Her pa will give the sweet right away. Her ma will cry, I'm happy to say. But she'll just smile and give my hand a squeeze. And her dear old Uncle Judd will likely sneeze. The bridesmaids glide and shyly along. The parson looking silent and strong. And if I'm nervous, doesn't mean a thing. But I hope, I hope, I hope I don't drop that ring. Got a pig, got a cow, got a horse and buggy now. And soon I will be driving down the old highway. Got a farm, got a plow, got a heart for working now. Tomorrow morning is my wedding day. They'll be friends throwing rice. They'll be applejack on ice. And everybody dancing while the fiddles play. Come along to the hall. You're invited one and all. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning is my wedding day. Oh, don't fence me in. Thank you, boys. I think I'll talk to a couple of them. Uh, Elsie uh, Rewerts, or Rewerts, uh, is one of them. And Irene Hendricks uh, is another. Irene Hendricks, would you come up here with Elsie, please? Uh, these ladies just must have knocked themselves out uh, fixing those hats up. I imagine the idea was uh, uh, just take any old thing you can find around the house and make something out of it. Is that it? Yes, they just throw a pile of stuff at us and sit here and make a hat. Well, you did beautifully, <laughs> all of you. Very, very pretty indeed. Are you Elsie? No. Oh, you're Elsie. Mm -hmm. Elsie, I, I like the way you wrote on your card. It just kind of expresses your, your whole life, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It is. It's it, really nice. Yeah, it is. Thank <laughs> you. Here's what she's got in her card. The canning is done, the chicken manure is hauled, and my husband's satisfied. <laughs> Everything is going fine out there. Sound like you have a wonderful life out there. Irene, you wondered if I had a definition for a farmer's wife. Is that right? Yes. Is that what you are? Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly do. A farmer's wife is a woman who's outstanding in her field. <laughs> That's right, too. Huh? That's right. I think it is. Yeah, yeah sure. That's true. Say, do you know uh, do you know Nellie, Frank? Yes, yes I sure do. Does she love to gap? Sure, sure, that's does. the one with that big feather up there. The one the guy said was a tree. Oh, the one the guy <laughs> yeah, said was a tree? Yeah, which? Uh, bring her up here, Dick. Yeah. Oh, that's that's <laughs> the one. That's Nellie, huh? Yeah. She looks quite a, like quite a gal. I suppose yeah. you I suppose you know Wilma Nobby, too, or Nobby. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 Yeah, she almost left her, left her teeth there in Hillsdale. Yeah. She had to go back for her. She had to walk. We had to hit, wait for her almost. 20 miles she had to hitchhike before yeah. she got here. Ever since I've been standing next to Nellie Franks and uh, Wilma... Kenobi. Kenobi. Uh... I've had a tickle in my nose. It must be this doggone feather you're wearing here now. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing there that you got growing. Isn't it? Yeah. It's antique. Mm -hmm. And it's what? It's antique. Oh, mm -hmm. antique? I like antiques, you know. Oh, do you? Mm -hmm. What have you... Oh, I've got a house full of them. Oh, mm -hmm. antiques. Oh, 14 rooms of it. Of antiques? Antiques, mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> this, uh, this includes your husband, does it? Oh, yes. He's antique, too. He's antique. <laughs> And my boy likes pheasants and ponies, and he's a carpenter. Your boy likes mm -hmm. pheasants and, and ponies. ponies. And ponies, mm -hmm. huh? Pheasants and ponies. He has a pony ride. Is it? And he has uh, pheasants and patriches and quails and all kinds of things. Well, what, what do you do with this auction deal? <laughs> oh, I like to go to auction, get right behind the auctioneer, and if you want anything, just poke him in the ribs. And he always takes the bid then. Does he really? He really does. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you just get a house full of junk, you don't want to do with it anymore. So that's what it is. You start wearing it and, on your head. And then it has to make... Ain't <laughs> <laughs> that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir, that's the truth. Yeah. You've got a house full of junk, too? No, I have junk, but not antiques. Not antiques. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> I know what you mean. With children, they get to be antiques in a hurry. Yeah, though, that's they? right. Uh, did you have to hitchhike a ride for 20 miles? You no, know, someone just wrote that. Oh, I think they're kidding. I think so, too. You didn't have to do that, did no. you? No. But is it true that you almost forgot your teeth? No, that's but not... I had to get up in the middle of the night. Oh, you did? Oh, I sure did. To get your teeth. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Well, say, it's, it's wonderful to have gals like you here who uh, just get up at what time? Did Two o'clock. Two o'clock. We left Hillsdale. Yes, mm -hmm. and get in the bus and gab all the way down here. Yes, that's right. And, yes, oh, the noise was terrible. I'll that, bet you. That yeah. horse, just terrible. You couldn't, see, it couldn't snap, save your soul. Yes, I can imagine. No, you couldn't. Well, I, I appreciate things like that, though. It just, just shows uh, what you women will go through. I tried to listen to television, but I tell you, I couldn't turn it low enough last night, and I stayed up all night, but I turned the television low, but the rest of them was sleeping. Oh, really? So I had to turn it real low and just watch the picture. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a nice thing about radio. You can turn up high and you don't right. even watch anything. That's right. Yeah. Uh, well, say it's nice to have you here, uh, Nellie, old kid. Don't mind me calling you old No, kid. not a bit. No, uh, you're in the antique. Sure, yeah, that's right. You're just as young as you feel. Right? That's right. How young do you feel? Well, I'll, I'll have a birthday the 30th. Is that mm -hmm. so? 29, huh? Yes, 29. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Awful good to talk to you, uh, Nellie, and you too, uh, Wilma, and all the rest of you gals. Thanks for coming down so much. <laughs> Thank you.
Mighty pleasant bunch they are. All right, uh, let's get down to our good friend Geraldine. Recently joined us from California, our little gal singer. How are you this morning, Gerald? Fine. How are you, Dan? I am excellent. What's yeah. new with you? Oh, apartment seeking again yesterday. How'd you do? Walked my feet off. Well, I think we may just uh, make a move into an apartment where we can have some cooking facilities, you know. So uh -huh. I'm so tired of eating out, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, so I think we'll make a fast move into a kitchenette apartment. Good. Well, fine. Well, you can stand a couple extra pounds here. That 20-inch waist, I'd like to see that up to 21. All right, yeah. we'll do it. Okay, in the meantime, here's Gerald singing Forgotten. comes our moment of silent prayer, each in his own words, each in his own way. For a world united in peace, let us bow our heads and pray. memory time, I'm not going to say that I approve of what I'm going to read at all. I'm just going to read it, and I know that the women will think it's great. You say it was the woman who caused Adam's fall? I think I can prove that was not so at all. Look at your Bible, and you will perceive God's command was to Adam, never to Eve. Although she, like a woman, the penalty paid. The fruit was forbidden before she was made. And so after his sin, Adam, just like a man, skulks around back of Eve as fast as he can. And when he hears the Lord's voice in the garden at night, he finds, Lord, she ate. I just took a bite. And since that sad time, I'm sorry to say, man has always acted that very same way. Whenever there's trouble of any kind, the wife takes the brunt while the husband sneaks behind. But up pops his head from behind his safe cover when trials are past and dangers are over. And he crows loud and long like a bold chanticleer. See, I shield and protect her, the weak little deer. A man is a creature we can't overlook. As easy to read as a page in a book. He'll boast and he'll brag of the women he spurned. But just like a doorknob, his head can be turned. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. A man, oh, a man, any woman will say, whatever he is, we like him 
that way. A woman is something both evil and good, but too complicated to be understood. An angel and loving, a devil and mad. A woman can make you both happy and sad. Uh huh. 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 Uh
If anybody ever asks him how high is up, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, till I read that, I thought that uh, I had went a long ways on uh, hot air, but uh, then I... Helium. Well, you got... What? Helium. Well, you might at that height. I don't know. I, I, have, I, I wouldn't really know about that. But uh, I couldn't uh, help but think... Helium. Well, never let, uh, it, no. let it go. No. I, I, yeah, you might as well. Yes, all right. Well, anyways, I was just thinking. I kind of brought to mind, uh, thinking about that, uh, county fairs. Was you ever to a county fair? I sure was. Ain't they a barrel of fun, though? They are lots oh, of fun. They, they really are. are yeah. They have them merry-go-rounds there and the Paris wheels. And, oh, I have had more fun. Ferris wheels. I went up in one of them one time. I didn't mind Ferris it so much. Ferris wheels. No, I wasn't on them. I don't know about that. But I remember uh, I didn't mind it so much when we was going up. But coming down, Jing, my past flew right before my eyes there. <laughs> Horrible to have to go through that twice. Yes. Just miserable. But uh, then they had the harmless racing there with the uh, little buggies and all of that. And there was a fella there. Uh, he was in a balloon, too. Helium. Uh, what? Helium. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Well, yes, I would if yeah, I was. All right. I, I believe I would. Thank you. Anyways, uh, this here fella was there with this wonderful uh, uh, balloon. And uh, he'd take uh, folks up in it for 50 cents a whack. Mm. Well, uh, Bert Beerbar, uh, he went up in it. He's really? a daredevil type. He was the first fellow to try green toothpaste in our town. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, uh, this here fella went up in uh, this balloon and take, taking people up. And then he was going to uh, try for a record himself. Uh -huh. And uh, so he went up and uh, quite a considerable ways. But I think he run afoul of a chicken hawk or somebody uh, that flew into the balloon. Anyway, it let out the air, and he came down, and he landed uh, in Hedford Crocs uh, tree, uh, cherry tree. It was. A wild cherry. And uh, so uh, uh, Hedford come running out, and he says, see, this fell off on the top of the tree, and he says, what in the world, he says, are you doing in the top of my tree? Well, the fellow says, I was aiming to break a record. And Hedford says, well, as, uh, says, as far as I can see, he says, I think you've done it. He says, you're the first fellow to ever climb down a tree that didn't first climb up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get Geraldine to work now. Bluebirds keep singing in the rain, is that right? That's it, Let that's them sing. it. Let them... the bluebird who sings, rain or shine, Gerald. There are 60 kids, uh, I call them kids because that's what Andy Foreman did. He's a minister who helped bring them here from Grand Island, Nebraska, and they're from the Trinity Methodist Church there, and he says they can just sing like mad. Hmm. Yeah. He's real mad. That's what he says. <laughs> well, I'm going to find out. Will you all please stand up and uh, sing for us here? Let's hear this group from Grand Island, Nebraska, and a big group it is. Okay, one, two, three. Thanks.
Good indeed. Uh, are you Linda? Yes, I'm Linda. Linda, they all mentioned the fact that you broke your arm. How'd you do that? Oh, at the church last Sunday, I broke it. Oh, reaching for the collection. <laughs> <laughs> huh? No, I fell down some stairs. You fell down some stairs? I'm sorry to hear that. Is it, uh, has it uh, kind of warped your style on this trip? No. No, not a bit. Huh? In fact, I see you got the cast completely covered with autographs, huh? Yes, we'd like to put yours on there. Sure, I will after the show. Okay. It's something you can uh, you can keep. Uh, you know, you can hang that up in your room after you take <laughs> it out. It'll gather in dust. Pretty soon your mother will say, take that messy old thing and put it up in the attic, you know? But uh, anyway, that's uh, it can be an antique someday. back to the same old spot tomorrow, and I hope you will, too. Until then, this is your Toastmaster, Don McNeil, and all the gang saying so long, and be good to yourself. Don McNeil's Breakfast Club has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.